Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to show you how you can easily modify your website to accept payments. And to do that, we're gonna use Stripe. So first of all, let's take a look and see uh, what the final product is actually gonna look like. So here we are on the menu, we'll just go ahead and we'll choose a product and um, add it to the menu. Uh, go to the menu, we're gonna we're gonna check out. It's gonna take me to the checkout. And then uh, over here at this point, um, we can you can see we can pay with credit card or we can pay with uh, Google Pay. Um, so I'll just go ahead and hit Google Pay uh, nice and quick. I'll hit pay. And now it's gonna redirect us back to our website where the payment's been accepted. Back on the Stripe dashboard, we can actually see uh, all the payments. Uh, so here's the one that we just made uh, for 1435. All right, let's break this down. So when using a hosted payment page, it's a, a different flow than when the page, uh, when the payment is accepted right on your website. Now, the only reason to do this really is to avoid having any kind of PCI certification. When you accept credit card data on your website or it flows through your servers at all, even if you're not logging any data, uh, you become on the hook for PCI compliance. Uh, so when using a hosted payment page like we just seen, we don't handle any credit card data uh, at all. Uh, and and this, is, this is what the flow looks like. So let's break it down. So we're the client uh, on the browser on the restaurant app and we click on buy. The, the browser sends the order to a backend API via a REST API or GraphQL API or whatever. The backend API receives it, it creates an order object internally, and then it creates an API request to the Stripe API uh, to create a checkout object. Uh, Stripe accepts it, it takes things such as the order amount, the products, uh, the user information, that kind of thing, and then it returns a redirect URI. Uh, the redirect URI of the backend API forwards that to the browser. The browser accepts it and then redirects um, to the to the Stripe page. At this point, the Stripe page is shown to the client. The client ask, uh, is asked and enters payment information. Uh, and at that point, once they hit purchase in, on the Stripe checkout page, the browser then verifies the payment info. It sends it to the Stripe API. The Stripe API then does two things. Number one, it accepts the payment, of course, and it charges the credit card or Google Pay or Apple Pay or whatever it is used. And then it redirects the uh, the browser back to the restaurant application. Finally, what it does is uh, we can configure it to send a webhook of the payment confirmation to our backend service. Now that's important because um, our backend API has to know that the payment went through and was successful. And so that webhook just sends the event notifications. It lets the backend API know, okay, so what order was this? Uh, and that was the order that we created earlier. Um, was the payment successful and was the card charged, et cetera. That's the backend API that you can use to update your backend ERP systems and such to uh, say the order has been shipped and processed, et cetera. All right, let's dive right in. So this is the application that we're going to be uh, using. So you can just go ahead and fork this, which uh, is a repository that I forked. And out of the box, you just have to uh, d uh, run this using NPM and then you get all of this, uh, which is a very nice place to start because um, we don't care about building the restaurant. We care about the application uh, payment. So, uh, so we have a menu. We can go. We can add um, something to the to the menu. And finally, here in my cart, you can see that um, we have all of the items. Uh, well, there's one. Let's add a second one. Uh, here's a salad. I'm gonna add it. I'm gonna add three sal four salads. And then uh, here we get. So now we have an order. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna modify this to have uh, an order button. Uh, and uh, the order button is going to send our um, API uh, request to our backend API. Okay, so uh, once we've cloned the repository down in the description, we can take a look at the beginning stage of the uh, restaurant application, which is what we were just looking at under the beginning slash client repository, uh, excuse me, directory in the repository. Um, and if you want to just jump ahead to the end, uh, you can uh, take a look at that under end. Uh, we have, uh, let's start with the server. So first we're going to build the, the backend API. Uh, to look at this, it's just a Node API, um, Node Express um, API. So we're using uh, Express and we're listening for post requests on our uh, server. And uh, once we receive a request, we're going to wait for uh, this um, async request uh, and uh, handle API requests. And so let's start building it out to see what that looks like. So handle API request, it receives a request and the function is async. 
uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to order uh, we're going to calculate the the order total and we're going to do that in the back end where it's safe because we're not going to trust the data that comes from our front end um, we're going to do that in the background once we have our order total we can create the payment request this is the actual object that we're going to send to stripe and in includes things such as the success url and the cancel url so after we've accepted the payment where are we going to redirect the uh, the customer uh, to these urls um, payment methods uh, straightforward card this automatically enables google google pay apple pay and uh, all forms of credit card uh, metadata so here's where you can inject my order id or something like that uh, this will be included in the webhook that's fired which is going to allow you to update your backend systems on um, after the payment has been received line items uh, so here's the actual total um, we can include each product but just for the sake of time i just have one single item and i'm going to calculate the order times 100 because for this version of the stripe api i'm using it doesn't use float it's just an integer uh, and so we got to multiply by 100 to get the uh, decimal in the right place quantity currency name pretty straightforward stuff uh, so next up, we make the actual API call to Stripe. So payment response, we're going to wait uh, a post request. And uh, we don't need to look at that. It's just pretty boilerplate-y. But we're making uh, an API request to the Stripe API. And go free, uh, go take a look at their documentation to see how that works. We get a response back uh, from Stripe payment response. And that includes a .URL object, which is the redirect URI I mentioned earlier in the architecture diagram. And that's what we're going to return to the customer. And in order to run that, we're just going to CD to the end server direct here. We're going to do an NPM I. Um, and then uh, once that's finished, we're going to do an NPM start. And that's going to run your app on uh, localhost port 3000. And then next up, we're going to build the uh, cart view. So we're going to first add our uh, button to the uh, to the to the page. So under cartview.jsx, we're going to uh, in the section below the um, where where the orders are listed in the cart, where the products, excuse me, are listed in the cart. We're going to create this div container. Um, and if the cart length is bigger than zero, we're going to show a button where once the button is clicked, it's going to purchase the cart. Otherwise, there's going to be a back button that will take you to the to the last view. And then uh, let's uh, build out the purchase cart function. So that's going to take an argument, which is the cart. Uh, and we get that from uh, our React state. So the first thing is to create a constant request options. And here's the, um, here's the API request. It's a post to our backend server, as we know. Uh, and then let's make the actual call. We're going to use fetch, the built-in React library, to send an API request to localhost 3000 with request options. Once that comes back, we're, we're going to uh, do dot then to say once the request comes back, the response uh, convert it to text um, because we're waiting for the payment URL, the redirect URL. And then once uh, we've converted that, then we can access it um, in a chain dot then. Uh, and so the data function, we're going to say if the data exists, um, redirect the browser by using the uh, window.location.href. Uh, and we're simply going to set that to the URL we get from the back end that's going to redirect us to Stripe. Um, else, if there is no data, just do a console.error. And that's it. Now we just have to um, open um, a new directory. Uh, you can see I'm already running it. Just go to the uh, client and then npm i and npm start. And that's it. That's all we have to do. Just like that, we've added payment processing to our website. Uh, so let's go back. Here's our website. Let's uh, go into salads, into Caesars. I'll just order uh, three Caesar salads. We can see our order is 2250. Oh, and look at that. We have an order button. So now we can press that. Our, um, uh, our website just made an API call to our backend, which made an API call to Stripe. And we can see, um, well, obviously, I miscalculated somewhere. Uh, there's the price of one salad instead of three, probably because I didn't multiply the, the total by the quantity. But here we are. So we can uh, accept Google Pay again. Let's do that. And we're going to pay. Stripe is going to process our payment. It's going to redirect us to the success URL that we set in the transaction request. And then it will redirect us back to um, our website any day now. And there we go. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Go on Stripe and register for a free account. Uh, they're very developer friendly. I really encourage you to use the tool. Thanks again. And um, of course, I'm not sponsored by Stripe or anything. It's just one of the tools that uh, I like as a, as a developer. So yeah, thanks for watching. Leave your comments if you have any questions about the process, if something was not clear, or if I skipped too many steps, or the otherwise, if um, I was going too slow. So uh, again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.